right, Baltimore Ravens, this is it. Get it done by any means necessary. You literally have the heart of the city in your palms. So everything that you do will affect it. But speaking about heart of the city, heart of the city clothing. They trying to hook y'all up with these run to Vegas hoodies. I know you're going to get yours. I got mine. It's your turn now, too. So in order to get it, click the link down below in the description and use code engraven to get 20, 20 percent off of your order. But speaking about getting 20 percent off, we ain't trying to give these Texans no discount off of this win. We are trying to charge them the full price for admission and then for them exiting M&T Bank Stadium with a loss. But how are the Baltimore Ravens going to do that? What do they need to do in order to get the job done? Well, I couldn't think about how they could do it by myself. So I had to call up two friends and I, I had to get the key. I had to get the lock and I had to go way down to the vault and open that thing up and look what was inside. Team Keep It Clean, two very extremely special guests in the building. They were voted both locally and nationally as Baltimore Ravens content creators' best guest, guest getters, because they get the best guests in the world. <laughs> uh, this is Bobby Baltimore, Sarah Ellison from The Vault. Y'all already know who they are because y'all done seen them literally everywhere, doing everything, talking to everybody. But they've taken the, their time to... Come on here to speak with us and team keep it clean about these Baltimore Ravens. How y'all doing today? I think I'm doing better than Bobby. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess we better take everybody in behind the curtain then, shall we? <laughs> we, we were supposed to do this. Yeah, we were supposed to do this a couple hours prior, and I tried to give you as much notice as possible. You know when you have a dentist appointment or any procedure for that matter, and you go in thinking that it's going to be – like standard or routine, like mm -hmm. I, I thought that that was going to be the case today for a simple uh, chipped tooth from snacking on some nuts earlier on in the week. And I thought it'd just be a simple filling. Well, <laughs> it was anything but. It was like a full on procedure, crown, temporary crown, Novocaine. And then what Sarah's referring to is, yeah, I had some serious discoloration post Novocaine injection. So I look like a freak in the <laughs> selfie that I sent you guys. <laughs> So, yeah, th this should be a fun one. And I, I guess I can ask you some questions that I wouldn't normally ask and get some different type of answers. So we'll Pretty see how this thing yeah. goes. But speaking about uh, routine, speaking about when things are normal, but they're not so normal anymore. That is the transition from going from the regular season, which is routine. Everybody has to get through that to now going to the playoffs where not everybody makes it. And of course, the Baltimore Ravens, they made it to the playoffs, but they didn't just make it to the playoffs, but they made it as the number one seed. So they've been sitting back. While everybody else has been battling it out, and now they have the privilege of going against the Houston Texans. And that game should have all of its challenges. But bottom line, the Baltimore Ravens need to get it done. What are some things that you all have seen from these Baltimore Ravens that let you know and let all of us know that this is the year and they're going to get this job done? Well, I think, number one, it starts with the talent. It, I mean... Everything else is, you know, supports that and whatnot. But I think the talent, I think that uh, Eric DaCosta put together a roster that is worthy of Super Bowl contention. Uh, started, as you know, Ing, all the way back when he first got OBJ, which led to Lamar, which led to, uh, you know, a draft where he got Zay, added Aguilar. He's, he's added pieces on the defense, the guys that are sipping from the fountain of youth. So I think, first and foremost, I think this is the most complete team the Ravens have had since drafting Lamar Jackson. And I think it's more complete than 2019. Second of all, I think that these, the second thing that makes me feel more confident about this team is 2019 and the experience that that was for many guys on this roster, starting with Lamar who were just like, it just seemed like it was, I don't know. Just it just felt like it was going to be so smooth and no conflict and whatsoever. And then they got yeah. punched in the mouth and yeah. never was able to recover. And there's myriad reasons for that with that we won't revisit. But that has stuck with them. That sticks with Lamar Jackson, which is why you see him not celebrating a single achievement all year. 
does it matter if you blow out the, the Dolphins or the 49ers? Like all of it, he acts like he's been there before. And it's like, it's what we were supposed to do. We've done this before. doesn't matter. The mission isn't yet complete. He is laser focused on the Super Bowl. This isn't just like the most complete we've seen the Ravens in the Lamar era. This is the most complete we've seen Lamar himself. And Sarah, you know, kind of hinted at a couple things there that I think make him the most equipped, well-equipped that he's ever been to do what he couldn't do or what this team couldn't do four years ago. And I think when you take a look at just structurally, too, what the last couple of weeks have been, I know we've spoken about it a lot. We even talked about it, I think, with you on our State of the Ravens last week. They have kept things as routine as possible, right, as as structurally sound as possible, and even kind of bulk things up from four years ago in terms of how they're going to handle their bye, how they're going to handle the regular season finale. Okay, we're going to go down to the stadium during the bye weekend and have a stadium practice so we can keep whether it's psychological or not, we can keep our guys in it as much as possible and keep that rhythm, hopefully, so they can pick up where they left off, not in the regular season finale, but, of course, the win streak prior to that. So, uh, to me, you know, this, this Lamar Jackson mentality that we've talked about, whether you want to call it Mamba mentality-like or just locked in, which has become the theme of the year, uh, it's contagious. It's trickled down all throughout that locker room. And, uh, look, I, I think you, you cannot certainly look past – Houston because Mm -hmm. they're playing fearless and Mm -hmm. sometimes when you have a young rookie quarterback and you have a first year head coach who have absolutely nothing to lose they've already overperformed right and and exceeded expectations there can there can come challenges with that but this team to Sarah's point is a lot different than four years ago whether it be the talent that they have uh, internally the personnel or just the way they play the game so sound all three phases well coached Uh, And you think that you can just get the sense that and maybe we're biased because we watch this team every single week. um, But but you just get the sense that history is not going to repeat itself this year. Yeah, for sure. I I don't see it repeating itself at all uh, because this team is different. Like you both just mentioned, you spoke spoke about Lamar Jackson, just how he's been focused. Uh, Sarah highlighted it with Lamar Jackson. He he get a possible MVP broke. He breaks records like every other week. He's always doing something phenomenal, always doing something crazy blowing out teams left and right, beating great teams left and right. But after each game, you just see this straight face. His smile, maybe a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Um, And as opposed to 2019, I mean, you saw them after every win. They were jumping around, celebrating. And I have a problem with that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But obviously, these Baltimore Ravens, they know that the regular season is a regular season. And, yeah, be happy about it. But, yeah, that's not enough. That, that, that's not where things stop. Now, with the Houston Texans coming into town uh, against the Baltimore Ravens, what kind of threat do you feel like the, the, the Texans pose to the Baltimore Ravens? I know, Bobby, you just talked about it, them being a young team, young quarterback, and they've been playing some outstanding football. But what are some uh, of the uh, threats that you feel like C.J. Stroud and those Houston Texans, they could pose to all Baltimore Ravens? Uh, first and foremost, just I think you think the way that – CJ, first and foremost, like the way that he performs under pressure, I think he's not the same quarterback that that we all saw, that the Ravens saw in week one. There's no doubt about that. But one thing that they did kind of, they disrupted him early, right? They got five sacks, a bunch of pressures on top of that. I think that's going to be a key piece of the puzzle for the Ravens. But he's just, he's just so sound, you know, going through his reads. He's not afraid to pull it if he needs to. So, um, I just think that the biggest threat that C.J. Stroud in the offense poses is their fearlessness. Uh, but but the Ravens' defense can counter, right? They can absolutely mm-hmm. counter. They've got all three all three um, all three levels fundamentally sound and ready to go to handle that. They've got some playmaking injuries, by the way, um, out on the outside for Houston that we'll have to monitor over these next couple of days. But that to me is the big. Like I said, I think their biggest threat that they pose is their fearlessness. And CJ's ability to just, he looks like a five to 10 year vet in the pocket. He's got great mm-hmm. pocket awareness. He's got mm-hmm. great, obviously, his, his, his mechanics and, and his arm are well documented, but he's also an athlete. So um, he, he's, he is your, your fully, he's got your prototypical quarterback traits, but also he can do a little bit of what Lamar does when, not at the same rate, obviously, that Lamar does, but if needed. He can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I live in Columbus, Ohio now. So obviously CJ Stroud, well-known here, (laughs) OSU. And, and to Bobby's point, he, he doesn't, he he performs well on big stages. We saw that 
uh, throughout throughout college and in, in his career. And Lamar Jackson, this is how you know somebody's confident. It's when you can give compliments to other people, right? And so uh, yesterday he was asked about C.J. Stroud's first playoff experience, and he was like, well, he did better than I did. <laughs> like he did, he did better than mine was. He just wasn't, he wasn't afraid to put that out there. So yeah, to me, um, I don't know that you're going to rattle C.J. Stroud, but I do think you can try to confuse him. And I felt like against this, um, in terms of yards per game, Browns were number one. They started to use the Browns' aggressiveness against them. It's almost it's almost like they knew the aggressiveness was coming. Mm-hmm. And so I'd like to see um, I'd like to see Mike Mack uh, do what he's done all year and and disguise his looks, show one thing pre snap, do another post snap, and try to show CJ things that he hasn't done before. Now on the flip side. Um, obviously lots have changed, lots of things have changed. And, and I remember, I'm pretty sure Ronnie Stanley got hurt in the middle of that first game. And right now we're in this rotation at that right tackle, but if Lamar got sacked something like four times and, um, there just seemed to be lots of pressure. And, I, and so to me, to me, this offense will explode if they give Lamar enough time back there, just, just, just protect him. And you know number eight's going to do the rest. So um, you know they've got they've got uh, you know some pressure back there on, on defense. And I'm sure you know. And, and I'm always interested to see what people are going to say. How do you contain Lamar? In the past, it was like, oh, keep him in the pocket, keep him in the pocket. It's like, all right, yeah, let's do that. Let's play that game and see how it turns out. So uh, I'm very interested to see how they they play Lamar. But to me, the number one thing is. Make sure QB one is protected, and I think everything else will will come together after that. Oh yeah, for sure. That that protection is everything, and Lamar Jackson is a, a cheat code because, like you mentioned, yeah, teams have said that before, and some fans even still say the same thing. Like, oh, if our team keeps Lamar Jackson in the pocket, oh, we're gonna beat those Baltimore Ravens. But little do they know, or little do they pay attention, or little have they seen that Lamar Jackson in the pocket, he'll dice you up. Yep. Dice you, up. you give him time. That's a wrap. Like somebody, I forgot who it was. They, they tweeted a picture and they were like, if you see Lamar Jackson standing like this and there was a picture of him with a clean pocket just standing there, then it's about to be trouble for you. <laughs> and it's, it's the truth because that's, that's what happens every time. Lamar Jackson, when he's given time, it's, it's, it's game over. So hopefully the Baltimore Ravens, they can have a much better outing with the same result as the week one, but a much better outing from the offensive line. And, and this is a much different offense itself than it was in week one we know the Texans are a much different team as well but specifically with the Baltimore Ravens this offense has their leaps and bounds better than they were uh way back then because that was way at the beginning of the season now we're not at the end at least not for the Baltimore Ravens it better not be uh but we are at this point of the season the divisional round uh in the playoffs now with all that being said and done with everything that we've talked about thus far with this game against the Houston Texans, how do you all feel this thing is going to go? How, what do you think the end result will be with the Baltimore Ravens taking on these Houston Texans? Sarah, we'll start with you. Yeah, Bobby and I do predictions. We've done them every week pretty much. Um, it's gotten to the point for me, Ing, and I I remember, and I said this, uh, as long as Lamar is playing, I said this going into the Miami Miami game when – you know, there's concerns. Say you're coming off this emotional win on Christmas Day in San Francisco. Now you got to come all the way home. You get another team that's – and in retrospect, it seemed like an easy pick. But I was like, at this point, how do you pick against them? Mm. How do you pick against Lamar Jackson at this point with the way he's been playing in December? And so um, just can't do it. Just just can't do it. I And right. and not only can, can I not, I don't think I, I – I would even flirt with it. Like I just feel like as much as I respect this Houston team, as much right. as I respect – uh, D'Amico Ryans and what he's done as much as I respect with CJ Stroud and what he's doing and how his uh, career trajectory is pointing all the way up as mm-hmm. much as I respect all that I just don't see how you can look at this Ravens offense and this defense and, and look at what they did to San Francisco and look at what they did to the Jags and look what they did against Miami and the way they've just been clicking uh, to me uh, the Ravens are going to win this and I think that Lamar uh, showed yesterday when he was asked by Jerry Sandusky, hey, you guys have scored just – you haven't scored more than 20 points 
uh, in your four playoff games? What do you? What is your confidence mm. level? Uh. And Lamar is like very confident, very very confident, <laughs> extremely confident. You know, and it's like this guy, this guy is about to go off. So I I see something in the thirty one uh, to twenty four range, Ravens. Okay, Bobby, how you feeling about this game going up against the Texans? I'm going thirty to twenty, Ravens. I think okay. it's going to be. It's going to feel a lot closer. I think it's going to feel a lot different than it did in week one. I think that D'Amico Ryans, having watched his press conference, has a tremendous amount of respect for Lamar and what this offense commands. But being that he's so not far removed at all from his playing days, I think he, he's a leader of men and he's got those guys humming in that locker room, but they understand like what, what you need to do in order to contain Lamar. Well, they understand how to do it. It's another t another thing to execute that, and he's just playing at such a mm -hmm. such a rate, such an MVP level that uh, they go as he goes. We've seen that throughout this year. We've seen that throughout the Lamar era, and now we finally get to see in January what the investment uh, means that they made the front office putting playmaking ability around him. Hopefully, something they continue to do as needed uh, throughout the next mm -hmm. five years. But we finally, after last year, we saw Mark Andrews lining up on the outside. We finally get to see a heavy dose of playmaking ability for Lamar. Let's see what he does it in January. Primetime audience, 430 ESPN, inside the bank. You've had the buy to get yourself right. Uh, you, you, you've won the division. right? You've had a chance to, to watch, I'm sure, a bunch of Houston tape from week one and also the way that they've mm -hmm. evolved and morphed into right. this playoff caliber team that nobody saw coming. And I think all that, you know, look, would not be – don't get me wrong. I would not be surprised if, if, if there's some – I don't want to say rust, but some struggles out of the gate. But I think that they learn from four years ago and they're able to overcome that, much like they have with every narrative that's been attached and labeled to this team, whether it's Lamar or the Ravens can't come from behind or whatever that is. They've shattered every single one of those, and I expect them to shatter the whole Lamar postseason narrative on Saturday. Man, you both made some really, really good points. Bobby, you just talked about how the Ravens have, uh, they've crushed a lot of the narratives that have been put out there about them. And Sarah, you mentioned earlier, um, just with the Baltimore Ravens, how they've shown like uh, before there may be some worries off of them coming like off of an emotional game, uh, like the one against the 49ers. I, I remember I was thinking it, uh, that's why I was a little like ooh, a little shaky about the, the game that they played after the Rams game because I'm like, man, that Rams game was just crazy, just draining for, for us as fans. While we watched it, it was draining for us. So I can't imagine the players being a part of that and just going through that emotional roller coaster from the what third and 18 or third and 17, where Lamar hit Zay Flowers for the touchdown, then the two-point conversion that followed that, but that not even being enough because the Rams drove down the field, kicked the field goal, then they went to overtime. And then just the craziness and the Tylen Wallace punt return for the touchdown. I was thinking, man, that the Ravens won that game. So if coming off of a game like that, I get it. I get it. If they lose, I don't want them to lose, but I, I would understand. But they didn't. Like the Baltimore Ravens have been a completely different team this year. And we've seen them operate just at a completely different level. So hopefully in this game against the Houston Texans, that will do nothing but continue. Vault. Sarah, Bobby, appreciate the both of you's time. Appreciate the both of y'all coming on. Team Keep It Clean, I already know y'all know who both of them are. But if you don't, for some reason, if you've been living under three rocks, then I'm going to uncover those rocks for you. <laughs> Subscribe to their channel. It's every, everything is down below in the description. I will have both of their Twitters down below in the description. Everything. Their YouTube channel, their Twitter, their pocket, all that good stuff down below in the description to make it easy for you. But I know that you know who they are. Already appreciate the both of you's time. Thank you both for coming on. Any closing remarks before we get out of here? Hey, we love you, Ing. You're the goat here on YouTube. We appreciate all the love and how welcoming you've been since we started our channel. Uh, you you kind of like let you lead the way on YouTube. We're always watching you and we appreciate your inspiration. I appreciate y'all for sure. Man.